Macklemore once said, Thrift shopping is all about going into the thrift shop and having no expectation of what you might find. This quote very much applies to Terry Horton's situation. Terry was an 86 year old woman from Costa Mesa, California, who purchased a huge painting at the Dot Spot Thrift Shop in San Bernardino. For Terry, other people's trash could potentially be her treasure. Even her home was filled with a bunch of art, all coming from the dumpster, thrift stores, and many more. One day as she was looking for a little something to give to her friend as a gift, she came across this painting. She later on purchased this painting for just $5. As Terry reveals the painting to her friend, this was her reaction. Well, she pulls in and she gets out and I'm like, what are you doing here at this time of the day or whatever? And she goes, well, I brought you just a little something. So I walk around and I'm like, a little something? Where am I going to put this? How, you know, where's this going? And I don't want to hurt her feelings or whatever. It's like, all right, Terry, this is really pretty ugly. <laughs> Since the painting was so huge, unfortunately, it doesn't fit into her friend's trailer home. And so they decided to put it on a garage sale. A teacher came by and informed them that they might be in a possession of a Jackson Pollock painting. Jackson Pollock is an American painter who is known for his unique use of paint by splashing in order to create abstract images. He's also known for having a permanent room full of his work in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Some of his famous works were The Blue Poles in 1952 and The Number 5 from 1948. By looking at both of these paintings, it is very clear how Terry's painting looks very similar to Jackson's work. As a result, Terry wanted to put it on sale. She believes that this painting is worth more than $50 million and also believes that she'll be able to sell it within her lifetime. When it comes to art industry, authenticity of an artwork plays a significant role when it comes to making sales. Without any sort of provenance or signature, most art collectors would not even bother purchasing an artwork. Now this will make it very difficult for Terry to sell her painting. The painting itself doesn't have any signatures that proves it's a Pollock. Neither there is provenance since the thrift store Terry got the painting from already went out of business. In order for this painting to have its authenticity, Terry had to consult the International Foundation for Art Research. In their statement, they believe that the painting is not by the hand of Jackson Pollock. One of their experts thought that the stashes of paint were intentional. This was Terry's response. Wanted them to look like they were just that that's what he totally intended to do was like take a brush and hold it back and just let it go and let it fly that's intentional you bet well why would they say it's not supposed to look intentional if that's what he intended to do that don't make any sense at all to me but these are experts terry oh, they're experts i'll put myself up against anyone on many day over 10 years have passed and the painting is still not sold terry decided to reach out to peter paul bureau Peter is a forensic scientist and an art authenticator based in Montreal, Canada. His techniques of identifying art help connect many lost paintings to its origin. I look at a painting almost like a crime scene, but not who committed a murder. I'm looking for who committed the art and under what circumstances. What did he use? How did he use it? How is this typical or characteristic or uncharacteristic? to the painter we theorize created that work. In hopes of finding any clues proving Terry's painting is real, Bill Page, who's Terry's son, flew Peter to California in order to investigate the painting. As Peter observes the painting, he notices that the back of the painting, there appears to be a fingerprint. This raises another problem since Jackson Pollock was never in the army, nor did any crime. There is no other source of fingerprint they can compare it with. He immediately came to a solution of going to where all of Jackson Pollock's work was made, which is located in his studio at East Hampton, New York. At the studio, Peter observed the surroundings, the floors, walls, just to find a fingerprint. He wasn't able to find anything until he came across a blue pail of paint. Fingerprint on a blue paint can. On the left is the fingerprint from the back of Terry's painting. On the right is the print from the can of paint in Jackson Pollock's studio. The bifurcations described by Andre Turcotte are outlined in yellow. And when the two prints are brought together, it is apparent they are one and the same. 
From these two images of the fingerprints shown, the lines and cracks of the fingerprints show its similarity, which proves that Terry's painting was by Jackson Pollock. Even though there's a clear evidence that the painting is by Pollock through fingerprints, in the art world, fingerprints don't mean anything. In addition to the fingerprints, they also found acrylic in Pollock's studio which matches the chemical compound that's found in Terry's painting. With all this evidence providing relationship between Pollock's studio and the painting, the experts didn't change their minds about the painting. There's no question that this thing is not a, a Jackson Pollock. And every top-notch person you're ever going to talk to will say the same. And if this thing is going to be marketed in any way, that there's a chance that it really is real, that's dangerously tipping on fraud. Terry was left ignored by the art industry. And so she decides to reach out to Todd Volpe, an experienced art marketer who's willing to help Terry sell her painting, in hopes of regaining his reputation back in the industry after being imprisoned for fraud. As Todd went on to market the painting, he was receiving the same response as every other art collectors. We offered the painting to Steve Wynn, Ken Wynn, Bill Gates, David Geffen, lots of different people, and the answer is always the same. Until you get authenticity on the picture, until you get the art world to say it's okay, we're not interested. Art collectors rely on experts all the time when it comes to validating artworks without considering other evidence such as fingerprints and chemicals found. For example, the Campbell scan by Andy Warhol was considered fake by the experts until they noticed at the bottom of the can that it has a signature by Andy Warhol himself. I would challenge them to prove that it's not a Jackson Pollock. Everybody's saying prove that it is. I'm saying prove that it isn't. The system should change as these experts ignore forensic sciences when it comes to validating art. For Terry's painting, many experts comment that the way the paint were splashed doesn't feel like Pollock or that the splashes look intentional. Terry's situation has brought up a flaw when it comes to an artwork's authenticity. Experts need to start using forensic findings as an evidence for validation. If forensic scientists can trace people's fingerprints and also use to identify crime, then it is safe to say that these scientists can also prove where lost artworks came from. In reality, no one really knows how artists plan to make their artwork look besides the artists themselves and no one can really know one person's intentions when it comes to art. This change, however, will be difficult to be implemented as most art collectors are from older generations, in which they rely on paperwork to identify an artwork's authenticity or person-to-person -person ownership tracing. Unfortunately, in July of 2019, Terry Horton passed away at the age of 86 without getting to sell the painting. Mm. She's the master of the thrift stores and a, a dumpster diving queen. She's traveled a highway, yes, searching coast to coast, trying to find a treasure that would drive away her ghost. Or maybe she's lucky, or maybe. story about Trucker Terry's fine.